Hello, I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the Loss Prevention News Network. Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the LP News Network. We're here today with Graham Handyside, the Executive Vice President of Worldwide Operations, and Ed Wolf, the Vice President of Business Development for WG Security Products. The Silicon Valley has long been the country's center of technological innovation, so it should come as no surprise that WG is located at its very heart in San Jose, California. Incorporated in California in 1998, WG has been turning heads in the EAS industry with its ingenuity and out-of-the-box thinking since its inception. While their concentration remains on loss prevention and asset protection solutions, their products know no bounds, with applications ranging from warehouse and storage locations to hospitals and correctional institutions. WG is guaranteed to have a technology, technologically and advanced answer to your monitoring questions. Their international staff of engineers works hard every day to provide tomorrow's answers to today's questions. Featuring out-of-the-box thinking, WG is bringing loss prevention solutions into the 21st century and beyond. WG was formed in Asia more than a decade ago. They've maintained their international presence with corporate and warehousing locations in California, Shanghai, and Germany. Their products can be seen all over the world from Eastern Europe and Asia and the Middle East to Africa, Australia and the Americas. Their expansive business partner network abroad and regional specialists in the United States ensure that WG is never too far away from you. Graham and Ed, welcome and thanks for being a part of this. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Graham, can you give us some background about WG security products and, and what makes WG unique and responsive to the market? Sure. Um, like you said, WG was formed over a decade ago. It's actually been 17 years now um, that it's been in operation. Uh, WG started off as a, as a small company here in, uh, in Sunnyvale, California. And uh, it's steadily grown and grown and grown over the last 17 years. And what made us special and different to others out there is that we're self-sufficient, meaning that we do everything ourselves, from the industrial design, the conception, industrial design, the manufacturing, the distribution, the sales, the service. We do, we do the whole nine yards, as you say, here in the US. And uh, so that one makes us uh, special, different, speed to market. Um, these are the things that we've seen ourselves catapult over all of our competitors, even though we've actually quite new to the market, only 17 years, we have become the forefront of the technology. Being in Silicon Valley gives us a huge advantage. Uh, our CEO, uh, Xiao Yang, is a brilliant guy. You give him an idea, his mind ticks away and comes up with some wonderful solutions. Mm -hmm. And that is what has made us uh, special and different to mm -hmm. our competitors today. And you manufacture most of it over in Shanghai with your own group of engineers, designers, in the whole bit. So yes. you can design something and look at a solution or a problem in a store and basically bring it to market in a matter of weeks. Yeah, that's one of our specialties, actually. Mm -hmm. that, that's one of the huge advantages of WG. We, as you say, we take it from the beginning right through to the end. Mm -hmm. And now we've actually hired a few engineers in um, Silicon Valley <laughs> Um, just to be able to be a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this for us is, because the market is changing, uh, cost uh, that are associated with products, um, it gives us a huge advantage just simply because we do everything ourselves. We don't have a middleman. The only thing that we do purchase, like everyone else, are chips 
and raw materials. Mm -hmm. The rest of it are all assembled in our facility or one of our facilities mm -hmm. in China. We have a few of them actually. Which makes it more cost effective. Uh, yes, it does, very much so. Does that translate into the market share and into being able to be a provider that, that drives lower costs? Um, well, the market itself is driving the lower costs these days mm -hmm. due to the economics of the country and the world. Uh, everything has come down, which again gives us another huge advantage mm -hmm. because we don't have those middle people um, to either buy from or to sell to to uh, get to our market. In fact, uh, you had mentioned a place in Germany. Our German operation is expanding throughout Europe where we were going through a lot of business partners. Mm -hmm. We are now changing our model and going more direct in those countries simply because of the economics around the world today. In being able to capture the market and drive the product right to them, less expensive. Yes. Yeah. You know, Graham, WG has been a worldwide player for some time now and as such, you've got some new exciting products that you're bringing into market with the seal tag stopping wardrobing, which got a lot of press and yes, a lot of media over the, over the last few months the Ninja Tag offering a new alternative to securing boxes, and the Hand Tag designed to enclose and lock on the hanging tab portion of a merchandise box. Can you talk about those products, how they came about, and, and talk about any other new technology that you have coming to market? Sure. Um, the Ninja Tag is, is one of our new products that, that we've released. And, um, you know, first of all, the retailers were a little bit skeptical about how it was going to work because it doesn't have any cables protecting the five sides of the boxes. And so we've taken proof of concept and, and put it in the stores and had some tremendous results. And here's why. Uh, the Ninja Tag is a small cigarette type pack uh, size. It has uh, either the RF, uh, AM, or RFID combination with either one of the other two uh, frequencies. It applies to the box. The speed of uh, the application is so important. It reduces the dollars uh, used to apply tags. Mm -hmm. um, there's no messy cables uh, to be all tangled up, just like you take a bunch of jewelry, put it into a box, it all becomes very tangled. So we've eliminated that and the speed to remove. So the pass-through line is, is so much faster. Easier into the store, easier off at the cash register, therefore saving millions in payroll dollars. Absolutely, because we have, um, we have a, a piece of plastic, mm -hmm. uh, the holder, that is applied in the, in the back room. Mm -hmm. It sits in the back room when the product is moved to the store floor. It is then applied, it may take one or two seconds mm -hmm. just to apply the tag, uh, and that's it. The, the features that it has, um, as I'd mentioned earlier, is the AM, the RF, the RFID. Mm -hmm. But what we've done, we've created another product. It's called Eyes on You, mm -hmm. and it combines the RFID, in this particular case, with AM technology. So when you're actually moving towards the exit and the thief is trying to steal it, what will happen is it will turn a camera on. There's a PVM monitor above the door. It'll turn the camera on. It'll shoot directly down at the person trying to steal the product. It will name what product it is through the RFID and then take a video of the thief trying to leave the store. So when the tag is, they attempt to steal the, the merchandise and the tag's on it, they walk to the door, the, the public view takes a picture of the person and says what item they're taking out. That's correct. Oh, ingenious. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous and uh, we've been running a couple of test stores right now and our results have been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Significant. Yeah. In, in the seal tag, could yes. you just tell us a little bit about that? I know that Ed was involved in that process and it's been extremely successful. I mean, well, actually I'd like to defer to Ed on that because he was the one that drove that. Mm -hmm. Well, the seal tag, uh, the problem with major uh, retailers today that are selling party dresses um, is that uh, there was a segment on Sex in the City 10 years ago that really started driving this process and women would buy a dress, um, wear it to the party, and then return it. And therefore, they're not actually renting it because they're not paying anything for the, t for the dress. So um, one of the re one of our uh, customers came to us and told me about this issue. We designed a tag that you that at point of sale when sold, the uh, salesperson puts this tag on the dress. Doesn't have EAS in it, and if the uh, customer um, wears the wears the item to a party, she either has to wear it with the tag on it 
or she, and it's visible, or she has to take the tag off. Mm. And if she takes the tag off, they won't accept a return for that dress. So mm. she's not able to do that normal So she can't uh, wear it to the party and take it back the next day and get her money back. Yeah. And what we've seen is the fact that, uh, one, we've seen a, re a significant reduction in returns, mm -hmm. but also seen a significant reduction uh, increase in sales mm -hmm. because, one, the dresses are there to be sold because they're not being, um, you know, at home or being worn to a party. But the other issue that was very interesting was that several women have commented about the fact that it appeared that they were selling used dresses in the store because they had so many returns. Mm -hmm. So it's really been a number of it's been a number of really positive things about it. Yeah. Um, Ed, with, with your industry background and knowledge, and, and the fact that you really pioneered source tagging uh, for the retail industry, the hard goods specifically, can you talk to that and, and give us a feel for how WG is involved in the source tagging initiative nationwide? Well, manufacturers have been offering uh, tags, EAS tags, on newly, merchant, newly manufactured merchandise and shipping it to, to their customers, the retailers, for over 20 years now. Uh, but up until recently, they couldn't get a hard quality plastic tag that they could put on apparel and have it not be too expensive for them to handle that process. So. Um, WG thought about this, we've been doing it now for a little over five years, and what we do is we, we offer the, uh, the same quality tag that the retailer is buying from us, and we uh, offer it on a one-time basis for a rental, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and then we recycle that tag. Mm -hmm. And so that enables the cost of the, the product to get, to, or the cost of the source tagging to to come down almost to the label, uh, the cost of the label that they've been doing for 20 years, and it enables the the value of having a quality tag on the merchandise for the for the retailer. One retailer we're working with right now, their industrial engineer, after evaluating the cost of applying the tag in the store, says they're going to save about 10 million dollars a year annually on that on that uh, that labor to put from the having tag on. the factory apply it. By, by, the having the, by having the factory apply it, right, 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 as opposed to being done in the back room of their back office of their store, and it increases consistency of tagging significantly. It well, it, it has a, a, a ton of yeah. ton of benefits. Certainly. Primarily, the, incon the consistency of tagging is important, but it but the floor readiness is far more important. Mm -hmm. You can go into this, into any number of uh, apparel manu uh, retailers today and you'll find that there's merchandise sitting in the back on an an uh, anniversary weekend when they want it on the floor because it hasn't been tagged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just recently was in a retailer where that was exactly the, the case. And they just don't have the labor to tag it so it sits back there for a much longer period of time than it needs to. If you, if you source tag it, it comes right, right into the back door, right onto the selling floor. Guys, you've talked about how unique WG is and about some of the new products and source tagging. Is there anything else new the retail LP executive should hear about? Graham? Yes. <clears throat> actually, quite a few. Um, we've, uh, we've actually been uh, releasing some here at the NRF this year. And one of them is our new floor mat. It's uh, an ingenious piece of antenna, and it activates our smart tags or other smart tags uh, around the market. We have a, a bottle tag that is a three or four alarm uh, bottle tag and uh, it goes along with the Ninja. But what we've done now is we feel that the release of our new Wi-Fi accessible antennas, a three year unprecedented warranty for our EAS products, uh, unheard of before in the industry, um, you are able to tune, synchronize, phase, data, um, count alarms, uh, we are notified if there's a problem with the system. Mm -hmm. So speed uh, for the customer to not be down for longer than hours mm -hmm. versus days is a revolution for this industry. Um, and it keeps the service costs down significantly as well, obviously. Yes, because we're no longer sending people right. out. One of the right. problems or two of the problems that that we found over these years where we're sending service people out to the uh, stores is uh, tagging too close to the antenna mm -hmm. which creates an alarm 
or another EAS AM system being installed locally, mm -hmm. where we would have to send somebody out and charge the customer for this service. Mm -hmm. Today, we no longer have to do that. We can tune it remotely from either San Jose or actually anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. One of the big issues that happens to a, a small box retailer or specialty store is that, say they have some false alarming because, um, because they have the tags too close in the field. What they'll do to, a, to eliminate that alarm is they'll turn off the system and then forget about it. Mm. And then and, and there goes their protection. Right, opens so, up the store completely. So we can tell when there's, there's a specific uh, electronic signature for tags in the field and a couple of other signatures sure. for other things. And we can tell when that's the case and we can get them back up and running in no time at all. There you go. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for supporting the event and being here with us today. And, and that's it for this episode. We'd like to thank you for watching. Shortly, we'll be starting our second phase of today's broadcast with the NRF senior leaders and the retail LP leaders coming next, so stay tuned. And now, back over to Joe and Andrew.